when I think of that moment when you have the, um, the, the most powerful law enforcement official in the country, uh, a member of one of the, you know, a very well-to-do family, uh, traveling here to Indianapolis, and then hearing that news. And when they got off the plane, the mayor told my father not to come here. And the chief of police said he wouldn't come. And my mom was here. My, my dad asked my mother to go back to the hotel. Uh, she was pregnant with my sister Rory at the time. And uh, when they came around the corner here, the police on their motorcycles pulled away. Uh, and they left my dad with a few friends. And um, <clears throat> when I think of that speech, I, I think of that moment as, as an iconic moment in American history. And it is that, it's something that helps us to connect with the past and know where we were as a country. But when I hear those words spoken, it has an immediacy to them that goes way beyond iconoclasm. He, I'm brought back and I'm there with my dad and I can hear him, and I can feel him, and I think you can too, trying to figure out what's going on. Trying to think through this unimaginably painful event and what it's going to mean for our country. And when he talks about pain, You can really feel that this is a man who's gone through a difficult time. And I think when you hear him and when you see him, you see that this is a leader who knows exactly who he is. He knows exactly who he is. When my dad was running President Kennedy's campaign, his first campaign for the presidency, he was a very tough guy. And uh, Martin Luther King was arrested and he was, he was uh, unfairly arrested. And my dad went around to everyone in the campaign, to all of the civil rights guys, and he said, I don't want any of you talking about this. It's a very divisive issue. It can cause the campaign a lot of problems, so I don't want any statements at all. And then he went home that night, and he started to think about it. And he started to think about the unfairness of being arrested because of the color of your skin, the unfairness of being arrested for what you've said or what you believe. And he found out the sheriff's home number, and he called him up. And, and he said, how dare you? How dare you in this country treat a man, treat an American this way? And when he came back to the campaign the next morning, everyone said, can you believe the press has made this up, that you would make this telephone call? And he said, well, I did. <laughs> and, you know, this is, this is what we, we need in the United States now, is someone who knows who they are and knows the difference between right and wrong, and can bring us together the way Dr. King was doing. I, you know, I want to tell you one other story, which, which I just learned uh, just a little while ago. I was speaking with one of my dad's closest friends, Peter Edelman, who, he was my dad's aide, and he went down and, to Mississippi, and he uh, fell in love with a civil rights worker there named Marion Wright. And uh, she came back to Washington and she founded the Children's Defense Fund. And they, which is ex extraordinary. Work. She came over to have lunch uh, with my mother and father um, at Hickory Hill. And she said, um, Senator Kennedy, I'm going down to see uh, Dr. King and we're going to spend a weekend together. And we're going to think about the movement and where we should go. What do you think I should tell him? And Peter said that my dad said to her, you should tell him that he has to become fully inclusive now in this movement. That he's got to work for all workers and all people in the United States. And that instead of having a civil rights march on Washington, he should have a poor people's march on Washington. And um, so I just learned that, that he had done that. And the, you know, the real point is that it's not so much that my dad worked with Dr. King. Um, it's about the America that the two of them envision. 
You know, I don't think it's any accident that the last thing Dr. King did on this day 40 years ago was have a pillow fight. You know, this was a man who could maintain the innocence of childhood and look at the United States as a child does and see a country that should be fair and see where the unfairness is and look, and look out to us and show us what we can be as a nation, what we can be as a people, and what we can do if we are all together, working together. That's the wish that my dad had. That's the wish that my dad had. And I thank you all so much, so much for having my mother and I. Can I just ask if my mom would come up for one minute? If you, if you guys want mom to come up, just say please. <laughs>